Welcome back to this channel. Today's channel shout out is to Cheryl White, Anita, Kashmoy, Cynthia, Bernica, Fabian and Viola Young from Jamaica. Alicia and Leela from Trinidad and Tobago. Kindra, Joyceline, Rosamond, Kunithia, Susan, Kellyman, Anita, Gina B, Diana, Henry and Vanessa McCormick, Rosemary, Carol, Vivian, Kima, Tracy O, Monica, Willinger, Rochelle, Gigi Green, Denise and Kathy from USA. Cecilia and Sarah from Tanzania. Champion Gith, Ben, Caroline, Rose, Damaris and Sandra Brown from Kenya. Myrtle from Dominica. Grace from Guyana. Esther from Turkey. Ulna, Joy and Gertrude from Ghana. Ariana from UK. Mr. Rick, Lena Joseph and Patricia from St. Lucia. Shanti and Rosalia from Namibia. Densi from Nevis. Val Madela from India. Olivia, Sarah, Esther, Deborah, Mildred, Catherine and Leah from Uganda. Rosal, Annalie, Mrs. C, Leshupi, Inwabisa, Lolly and Modi is from South Africa. My faith has made me whole from Dominica. Kathy from Malawi. Rochelle from Guyana. Caroline from Namibia. Chef Esther Kitchen from Ecuador. Nail from Bahrain. Drop your name and where you are watching from in the comment section to get a shout out from this channel. Now let's dive right into the video. Hello sister Jessica, how are you doing? Hope fine. I am fine, thank you. How is your studies going? I hope you are through with studies now. No, I am in my final year. I am about rounding up my undergraduate program. Okay, God will see you through. So how is your relationship life? Are you seeing anyone yet? No, I want to be through with my studies before going into any relationship. I do not want any distractions. That is nice though, but if you are in final year of your program in the university, and you are still not seeing anyone, how well did you think you will do when you are out in the world of men? In school, you have the opportunities to get to meet good brothers, and know their attitudes, but oof there, there are a lot of pretenders. Well, I am of the opinion that being in a relationship at this point in my life, will lead to distraction. And I want to remain a virgin, till I get married to my husband. Well, that is a nice thing to do. I think it is well planned out by you. I pray God will give you the man after God's heart that will complete you. Thank you sister Jessica. I will see you some other time, I am having fellowship in an hour's time, and I need to go prepare well. Okay, bye for now. Hello Sister Faith, how are you doing? I was hoping to catch up with you after the fellowship. I have some things I will like to discuss with you. Hi Brother James, good day. I was trying to tidy the chairs in the hall before coming out. That is why I was in a little longer. So you have been out here waiting for me all this while. I hope all is well. All is well. I just want to. I just wanted to ask you a question. Okay go ahead, I am all ears. I am listening. I wanted to ask you out, I have always liked you, but I stomach my feeling ever since I met you in our 200 level, in the class. What do you mean, just go straight to the point. I have always loved you, and cherished our friendship. I just thought as we are about rounding up our program, I should let you know of my intentions towards you. You are beautiful, ingenious, loves God. I could not have wished for anything more than to have someone like you as a soul mate. Please sir, I am not interested in all this love thing. I was thinking it is something important you wanted to even tell me. I did not know it was about being in a relationship. Take a good look at this environment, how many relationships have gone past the school gate, it is not even up to 1%. And you want me to be involved in that? Okay. Let me ask you, if we are in a relationship, won't you demand for sex? I understand your point of view, but I think the love I have for you is genuine, and I will like for us to pray about it at least for now. I know most relationships in higher institutions end at the school gate, with each person, going away on their merry way. But I am obliged to whatever you want. You see, you are obliging to whatever I want, so you want it, and you will come pretending. Why not have it in your will, to remain a virgin till marriage? I am only being frank with you, I will not engage in such sinful act, when we are not yet married. You are so funny, so if my will is weak, are you not supposed to be the one to encourage me to stay strong and abide by the word of God? You are here saying, I will oblige to what you want. This means if you meet any sister and she has a weak will, you and her will engage in this sinful act. 
I cannot date someone like you. I am sorry. But Sister Faith, I was only being real with you. I did not mean I will engage in such sinful acts. Please forgive my comment. I was just being real with you. Some brothers will pretend until they get you into their nest, and then take advantage of you. I will never do such a thing. Okay, but I am not interested. Thank you. Okay, just pray, and think about it too. I know what I want in life and I am not in for any frivolous relationship. I am determined to keep myself for my husband to be. Okay, thank you for your time. How are you doing Sister Faith? I saw you and Brother James a while ago. Yes, we had a little discussion after fellowship. He was talking about us being in a relationship. You are privileged oh, many sisters really liked him because he has a beautiful voice when he sings. He sings like an angel. Well, as for me, I am not in for any relationship now, I'm not interested. Let's leave brother James matter alone. So what did you cook for me, I am famished. I just finished cooking rice, you can go serve yourself, while I take my bath. Good afternoon, sister Faith, God bless you. Good afternoon brother Solomon, God bless you too sir. How are you doing sir? I am fine thank you. I have been meaning to ask you, please do you think we can have a session where we can fast and pray for our upcoming retreat? I do not get you sir. What do you mean? I want us to find time to intercede for our upcoming retreat, and I think it will be ideal if we met more than once to pray and prepare well for it. Okay, I get you now. So what do you have in mind sir? As the spirit leads, we will follow. I was hoping we can meet thrice in a week, to pray concerning the retreat coming up. Okay brother Solomon, it is already running late. Let me be on my way to the hostel. Let me walk you down a bit, since it is already running late. From there I will go to the boys hostel. Okay, that's thoughtful of you. Thank you. Hi sister Esther, how was lectures today? It went well, and how was yours too? Hope fine. Yes, it was fine, thank you. Who is the nice brother, that walked you home just now? You are really trending. You mean brother Solomon, he is my fellowship assistant president. He wants us to prepare ahead for our retreat, coming up soon. That's nice, but it is like he is also getting to like you. I can see love all over his eyes, even his body language is showing it. Sister Esther, your mind can be pervert at times, he is just a fellowship brother and nothing more than that. Well if you say so, but I know a lover boy when I see one. He likes you. Well if you say so. I choose not to believe it. You can be so naive at times, and yet confident about it. I hope you are right and I am wrong. Well, let us leave his matter and discuss what matters. So hope you will join the choir as you promised. You have such a good voice and you only use it in the bathroom. You should at least join our choir. Let me think about it. You know I have stage fright and sometimes develop cold feet when I am before a large audience. The only time I get to express myself is when I am alone in my bathroom. I will take that as a yes, I will tell brother Solomon about it. No, do not tell him yet. Let me think about it, just for today. Alright then, let me go and take my bathe. I had a very busy day today. Hi sister Faith, how are you doing today? I hope you are fine. I will be going to the church hall, is it okay if you pass by so we go together? No, I will be coming alongside my roommate. Sister Esther, you know her right? Yes, yes I know her. Are you going there to do something along with her? I was thinking it will just be a meeting between us both as we prepare for the program. Yes, I want her to also join the choir. Oh, that is nice. She is highly welcome. Thank you so much sir. I do not understand why Brother Solomon was asking you if we are coming together. I hope it is not what I am thinking. No. You know maybe he wants us, the ex goes to be the only one there, it could be the reason he is asking. As soon as I told him you are coming to join the choir, he was very excited. Well, if you say so. I smell foul play in his attitude. Just watch and pray. Remember the Bible verse, in the book of Matthew 26 verses 41, it states that you should keep watch and pray, so that you will not give in to temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Stay alert, be in prayer so you don't wander into temptation without even knowing you're in danger. Sister Esther, the pastor, so you can quote the Bible so good like this. I am a Christian so I definitely know the words of God, so I can fortify myself with it against the fiery darts of the devil. Come to even think of it, so you are so grounded in the word of God, and yet you are withholding your gift for the work of God, do you want God to raise stones in your stead? Well, I do not think so, I still use it in the bathroom to praise God. So it is okay. 
But be careful with this brother Solomon. You just do not like him right. It is not like that, I know he is proud and pompous, but it is not for him to act that way since he is the vice president of the fellowship, but Jesus is meek, so I expect him to behave so. They want every sister to be kneeling down and calling them Papa, I do not have time for their drama. That is why I have stomached my feelings this long. So I am not here to worship any man, but to serve God. Okay I will be careful, not to let my guard down around him. I know you mean well for me. Okay, let me go inside and join the other choir members, it is almost time for the rehearsals. Okay, happy rehearsals. Hi Sister Esther, how are you doing? Nice to have you join us. Thank you sir, I am glad to be of service to God Almighty. So Sister Esther, I want to ask you some things, and I know you will be in the best position to answer me. I am listening to your questions. How long have you known your friend Faith? Is she seeing any brother in this fellowship? Well I do not keep track of her personal life, why don't you go ask her yourself? No, I just felt led to ask you so I can know how to arrange our venue for meeting in preparation for the student convention coming up. You are always bold at talking back. Well I just needed to inquire that from you. Thank you. It is well. I hope you did not take my words as being too outspoken. It is alright, although you are too opinionated. It is well sir. I always say my mind, if that is what you mean. Hi Esther. How was the rehearsals? Hope it was great. It was actually, but your boyfriend almost spoiled my day, he said I was too opinionated, because I speak my mind without holding back. I am not into someone talking me into being someone else that I am not comfortable being. I was meaning to ask you about what conspired between you both, because he was saying you talked rudely to him. You mean he said so? It is because I didn't tell him what he wanted to hear, he wanted me to tell him about your personal life, and I didn't give in to him. I told him to ask you directly, that I do not know much about your personal love life. I will take precautionary measures if I am you. You mean, he was asking about my love life. And he didn't mention that to me. It is okay. Thank you for the heads up. I will be careful. You had better be. Hi Sister Faith. Good morning, how are you doing? I am fine sir, and you? Why are you frowning your face? I hope no one offended you today. You are the one who offended me. You did not deem it fit to ask me directly personal things about myself, only for my friend Esther, to be telling me about it. I don't like that. Oh that, I was just having a conversation with her, that is the reason I asked, please do not be offended. I am sorry if it made you feel bad. I am offended at your actions, you talk with me every day, then you go behind me to ask my friend about my love life. It is like you are encroaching into my private space. I am sorry, I do not mean to pry into your private life. I am truly sorry. It is okay. Sister Faith, how was your meeting? You came back a bit early today. Yes, I did. We are not able to meet. I challenged Brother Solomon as to why he was prying into my love life without having the courtesy to ask me himself. He kept on apologizing. Well, I do not know his intentions, but I think he likes you so much. Why, did you think so? Was it because he asked about me from you, or you noticed something else? When a man takes interest in a lady's personal life he has interest in her. Although he is a wonderful brother, but I am not into any of that now. I want to face my studies, and serve God. That is the paramount reason why we are in school. So when are you going to make your hair, in preparation for the program? I do not even know, I do not have much money on me now. All the money I have left is for my upkeep. I may just cover my hair and attend the program like that. It is okay, so am I. My parents just sent me some money to buy foodstuffs, and I cannot prioritize my hair over my food. You are funny, you like food so much. It is not my fault, I cannot finish reading all night, then starve myself over the fact that I want to look good. You are a wise woman. That is why I enjoy your company. Sister Faith, how are you today? I am sorry for being too inquisitive the other time. Good afternoon sir, it's no problem, how are you doing too? I am fine, I wanted to give you some money for your hair, it looks old and needs retouch. Thank you sir, but are you noticing my hair, and my appearance too? I just felt it is old. I have sisters too, so I know how long a hair should last on their head. Well, that is thoughtful of you. Thank you. If you do not mind, is it okay if we met in my family house, so we can meet to pray and plan for our forthcoming program at least, it is public. Okay, let me think about it. It is okay, do take your time. So when do you intend for us to meet? It's 2 p.m. noon, okay by you. That is fine by me. See you then.
Hello Sister Faith, you are welcome to my humble abode. Thank you sir. So, where is everybody? My parents and my siblings have gone for a program and will be back anytime soon. Okay, but this is no longer public, as you earlier said. I am not comfortable being in the same room alone with a man. I will be leaving now. No, you do not have to leave, we are meeting outside, in the, the compound, and not inside the room. I will not do anything perverse towards you. Let me get two chairs for us to sit and begin our meeting. Okay, that will be better. I like her so much, I do not know how to tell her. I hope she feels the same way towards me. Hi Sister Faith, how are you, it's been ages. Hope you are doing fine. I have really missed you so much. Are you avoiding me? Hello Brother James, I am fine. How is studies? Why would I be avoiding you? I wish I knew why, but you haven't been returning my calls. I have tried reaching you, but you are not picking my calls. Is this all you have to tell me? Not really. I just wanted to know if you are fine and to tell you my heart beats for you. I am in love with you. I do not have time for all this your talks. Bye bye. I have lectures in some minutes time. Take good care. How was lectures? I am very strong and as such will not be able to attend the rehearsals today, but I will make it up next week. I was thinking you will be going for rehearsal, so that you can accompany to our prayer meeting. I was texted by Brother Solomon of our prayer meeting by 4 p.m. I wish I had the strength, I would have accompanied you. But not to worry, always be on guard. Funny you, but you were right. Thanks for your concern. Hello, Sister Faith, how are you? Are you still coming around for our meeting for the upcoming retreat? I will try. Sister Esther is very strong. I think she has malaria. Send her my warm regards. Tell her to get well soon. I will do so. If I am chanced, I will call you before coming over. Sister Faith, thanks for coming. How is Sister Esther's body? She is fine. Thank you. What can I offer you? I am okay. Thank you. Your parents are still not back. Yes, but they will be back in few days time. I hope you are comfortable. Well, I should be. I am having my birthday in two weeks time. I do not know if you will like to join me for the birthday celebration. It is going to be in an open place, so you can be comfortable. Okay, that will be nice. Happy birthday in advance then. I wanted to show you how much you mean to me. You're truly a blessing in my life. This place is nice. I appreciate you taking the time to plan this special evening. I am glad you came by. Your presence alone has made my day. I wish nothing more on this special day than your presence. Thank you so much Sister Faith. It is nothing. You have been nice to me too on several occasions. You even have me some money to make my hair, in preparation for the forthcoming retreat. So, I owe you a lot too. Thank you. I really appreciate your kind gesture. I have something specially planned for you for the evening. Is it okay, if we went to my apartment from here? I bought a necklace gift for you. Well, I do not know what to say. I am only trying to be cautious. It is okay to be. At least you have been with me a while now and known my person. Sister Faith, I can see that something is troubling you. Is everything okay? I've been thinking a lot about our relationship and the teachings of the Bible. I want to make sure we're living in accordance with God's word. I understand your concerns. Trust me, our love is pure and honest. The Bible encourages us to express our love physically, to become one in body and spirit. What are you reading, Brother Solomon? I'm studying a passage on love and relationships. It's so inspiring how the Bible gives us guidance on these things. It is found in 1 Corinthians 7 verse 36. It reads, But if any man think that he behaveth himself uncomely toward his virgin, if she pass the flower of her age, and need so require, let him do what he will, he sinneth not, let him marry. I hope you get the message in the verse of scripture. That's wonderful. I've always found the teachings of the Bible so comforting. It's like a beacon of light in a dark world. The bond between two people should be built on love and trust. Exactly. The Bible emphasizes the importance of love and connection in a relationship. I am not too familiar with the verse of scripture you just quoted in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 36. It is a simple verse. It meant that if a man thinks he behaves himself in a manner that is not right towards his virgin, and if she has passed the flower of her age, they can do whatever they want as long as they get married. You see, the Bible emphasizes the need and value of love and connection in a relationship. I have always liked you, and I know you are aware of that. You can see that even the Word of God, in the Bible scriptures we read says it all. I believe you have passed the age of your flower, and you know I am truly in love with you. I am confused. 
I did not expect all of these you are telling me. I like you too, you are generous, kind and God-fearing. But, I want to trust that our love is true in the eyes of God. You can see for yourself, it's in the Bible, we can do whatever we want, since you are past the age of your flower. We are not sinning against God, so long as we do the needful. That is we should get married. It is not like I do not like you or love you, but, I am careful not to do anything that will jeopardize my future. I am in my final year, and I promise to remain a virgin till I am married to my husband. You can see that I am capable of taking care of you, even though I'm in school, I am also working and earning a lot of money. I love you and it is from the depths of my heart. I want to be in a companionship with you, if you so desire. Few weeks later. Hello Sister Faith, you are looking weak, are you not going for lectures? I am supposed to, but I don't understand how I am feeling. I am feeling so restless and weak. I also have headache. Okay, but you are running late already. Let me get my head a little bit, I will try and catch up with you later. See you later, I am off to school. Okay, bye. Hello Brother Solomon, good morning sir. Are you in school or at home? I am at home, I just came back from work. Do you want to come over so we can have a nice time together? There is something I need to discuss with you. Okay, I will be expecting you dear. I haven't seen my period for almost a month plus now, and I have also been having all manner of fever and body weakness. I just tested myself with a pregnancy kit this morning, and found out that I am pregnant. What? Unbelievable. What do you mean brother Solomon? I'm sorry, but you have to abort the pregnancy. But why? You told me the other day that we sin not so long as we get married. That is the only reason I accepted your preposition. Who do you think got you pregnant? How am I sure I am the only one sleeping with you? Am I the only one you are sleeping with? Who knows whether you are seeing other people? God will judge you, you talked like you did not meet me a virgin, you know I am not wayward. Do you want anything to impede your educational career? You have to abort it so it will not affect your studies, as well as mine. I want you to think about it. There is nothing to, to think about, I can't commit the sin of abortion, I thought you were a Christian. Please try to understand me, everything is at stake here, doing this will not change the way I feel about you, I promise, moreover, we can always ask God to forgive us and have more children at will. It's fine, so how do we go about it? I will get you some local concoction that will take care of it, it is just developing. Faith agrees to take the concoction, she woke up afterwards in the hospital with intense bleeding that almost took her life. Sister Faith, how are you, thank God you are revived. I want to ask you something. Please tell me the truth. Were you pregnant, and who got you pregnant? When you fainted and I rushed you to the clinic, the nurses said, you took abortion pills or concoction. I argued with them, but they kept saying so. Please, tell me the truth. I am sorry I kept it a secret from you. It was Brother Solomon that got me pregnant, we had sex a few times. He promised he was going to marry me, that there is nothing wrong in us having sex, he even backed it up with the scriptures in 1 Corinthians 7 verse 36. Which says, But if any man think that he behaveth himself uncomely toward his virgin, if she pass the flower of her age, and need so require, let him do what he will, he sinneth not, let them marry. You mean the assistant president of the fellowship? He got you pregnant and told you to abort the pregnancy. Only God will judge him. Please do not escalate the matter. I do not want it to go public. Because of the stigmatization. I wish I could help, but unfortunately the matter was witnessed by some students when you were rushed in from the hostel. I can only hope, your parents will not be disappointed at you. What have I done to myself? He said no one will know, that I should just take the concoction. Now, everyone will get to know about it. It is well. I have some vital things I want you to take seriously. Please do not give up your faith in God. We noticed the concoction you took was too strong for your system, hence it ruptured your womb. So, we had to save your life, else it will keep rupturing and eventually could lead to death. So, please take heart. You mean I do not have a womb as we speak? I am finished. My parents must not hear this, they won't be able to take it. Your womb is gone and as such you may not be able to give birth again. Please be strong, and take your medications properly. Brother Solomon, if I was told you could do such a thing, I will never believe it. You are the assistant president of the fellowship for crying out loud, and yet you get my friend pregnant and had the audacity to give her concoction to get rid of it. You are a wolf in sheep's clothing. Now that she has lost her womb and may never be able to give birth again. 
God will judge you. I never knew it will result to that. I just thought it will abort the pregnancy. I did not want anything to impede or hinder her from continuing studies. I am so sorry to hear this. So where is she now? Is she all right? You can go ask her yourself. You should have thought of all these things before you got her pregnant. It is even more terrible that you quoted the word of God to deceive her. She is in her final year and hoping she would be in a relationship only after her studies. I wonder how you are able to talk her into allowing you have sex with her. You are a terrible person. I did not know it will result to this. I only wanted what is best for both of us. I truly love her and will never do anything to jeopardize her studies or ruin her life. You had better go and see her. She is in serious pain right now. You have successfully ruined my life. You knew the concoction you gave me was bad, and yet you encouraged me to take it. I almost died after taking it, and to worsen the situation, my womb was removed to save my life. I am so sorry, I did not know it will result to this. Now that I have no womb, I hope you would fulfill your promise of standing by me no matter what, I mean, I hope you will still marry me. God will give you your own husband. I do not think I can marry someone without a womb. I am sorry. So this is the way you want to treat me. It is okay, I cannot force myself on you. God will judge you. Who will marry a woman without a womb, I will kill myself, brother Solomon has deserted me. I do not know if I can trust any other man in my life again. Don't say that sister Faith, why will you even think of killing yourself? What is the essence of living when I have no womb? Brother Solomon has left me, saying he cannot marry a woman without a womb, that it was not his fault my womb had to be removed. He does not even pick my calls again. He has packed away from the previous house I know. That doesn't make it right. Even the word of God condemns it. The sixth commandment clearly states, you shall not murder, in Exodus chapter 20 verse 13, and suicide is murdering oneself. What am I living for, when I know I cannot bear children of my own? The man that got me into this mess also have deserted and left me, saying it was not his fault I lost my womb, and that he cannot marry a woman that has no womb. It is well, God is merciful, everything that happened is for his name go be glorified. If God was not merciful, you will have been dead after losing so much blood after taking that concoction to abort the pregnancy. He is merciful, just keep serving him. Promise me, you will do just that. I promise. After five years of diligently serving God, Faith got married and gave birth to two lovely children. Brother Solomon on the other hand didn't have a successful relationship. He looked for Sister Faith to beg her and marry her, but it was too late. Thanks for watching. Like, share and subscribe. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell in order to be notified when another video is being posted.